Live Better and Longer with The Fitness Show, hosted by fitness expert, author, and TV personality, Fitz Kohler. She'll tell you why diets are dumb, supplements are snake oil, and the truth about how you can earn a lean, hard, pain-free, and athletic body. Now for our favorite bossy blonde, Fitz Kohler. Hi team, I'm Fitz Kohler, your fitness expert from fitness.com, and welcome to The Fitness Show. Today, I have my partner in noise. That's right, the other half of Team Noisy is here, Rudy Novotny. Heidi ho, Rudy. Hi, Fitz. How are you? Happy Noise Day. <laughs> Happy Noise Day, indeed. So I'm going to start off by giving you a hard time because it feels like it's been forever and a day since you've agreed to come on my fabulous podcast. Well, it's always fun to come on, but I have to admit that I really enjoy your other guest much more. Um, the podcasts have been really, really fun. I'm still laughing at uh, Rob's holding up a bank in California with a bagel. Oh, <laughs> sadly, it's true, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's, that's how I come oh, boy. armed. So, um, but it has been making me very sad that you've been avoiding me, even though we spend lots and lots of time together. Well, I'm sorry. I'll stop avoiding you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be avoiding you very, very little in the next several months. We've I, got a, a lot going on. I'm sure you'll want to cover that. I know. You poor SOB. Stuck <laughs> with me. So, so for those who don't have any idea what's going on here, um, Rudy and I are race announcers, and we are blessed to do many together. We host plenty of events, plenty of events separately, and I think we're pretty... Um, pretty decent on our own, but I think we're even better together. What do you think? I think it's just a, a blast working with you. I, I think we really seem to bring out uh, the best in each other. And uh, as, as much as we do well apart, uh, at least on my side of the country here, these people hear about you or hear you. And it's uh, all of a sudden, I'm not working alone anymore. <laughs> no, thank goodness for that. Thank goodness. And I love coming to work with you. So I'm going to start off with the most uh, selfish question in the world. This is going to be so easy for you, Rudy. Are you ready for question number one? I, I, I'm ready. What's question one, Fitz? What is your favorite part of working with Fitz Kohler? Oh, boy. <laughs> How obnoxious is that? Oh, boy. My favorite part of working with Fitz Kohler is that generally – you pack and bring with you to everything you do sunshine rainbows puppy dogs and butterflies Aww. there are no bad days with fitz kohler in part because they're not allowed right <laughs> so, <laughs> any, anybody who could make me smile at last year's oc marathon when it's about 40 degrees and raining and hailing um is somebody special so that's that's my favorite thing, Fitz. Well, that's very sweet. Plus, I don't. You're right. I don't allow you to have the flat face. No, no. F <laughs> Great. You had to bring up flat face. <laughs> so everybody Lovely. sees this most magnificent <sighs> smile, <laughs> Rudy. But he gets irritated and he gives me the the flat face, and then I shake my finger and I say, "No flat face." <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, the truth is that Fitz saw the flat face well before it was given to her when it's been given to, um, well, let's just say uh, vendors, timing companies, and other people who were having difficulty performing. She looked over and she said, ooh, <laughs> no, that's, not, that's not pretty. <laughs> no, and that's beyond flat face because this is our dirty little secret show apparently because everybody always sees the super crazy happy part of us and Rudy especially. So my very first race with Rudy was my very first race ever. And there's 25,000 people there and it's all yay, yay, fun. And then the timing mat stops working and we start, we stop getting names on the computer so we can do our job. And Rudy has a dark side, a very intimidating, a different type of noisy side. So he starts barking at these people. And instead of me engaging, I just kind of creeped away and moved as far back to our stage and minded my own business you are a pit bull my friend okay now you said barking yeah. actually the truth of it is uh, most of my intimidation is just a glare with a little with a little smidgen of um <laughs> of barking 
very, very intimidating from the biggest, happiest smile on the planet. You go from one thing to the other so fast, and Lovely. I've learned to stay out of it. There, are, there goes about 300 friends just bailed Aww. on my Facebook page. Oh, he really isn't very nice after all. <laughs> no, you're effective and powerful at what you do. And so what's, what's good for me is now I've taken that bravado you've, you've shown me. And so when I'm across the country hosting some other race without you, I know how to get st stuff done. So... It was all leadership and role modeling with your story. Oh, boy. Nice nice turnaround, Fitz. Nice job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's one of my favorite parts of working with you is um, that you're so together. I mean, A, you brought me into the profession, which I'm a trillion, billion percent grateful for, and I love it. Um, but you really lead by example, and it's nice to be your sidekick. Well, uh, you know, that was very easy to do because you are absolutely a natural in every way. Um, you had so much experience that was related that uh, I don't even know if we went. I think we probably have gone through uh, on, on another podcast how that all rolled out at OC. But you just took uh, you took what really is a major event uh, as your first foray into race announcing and showed what a pro you were and just grasped it and you know most people start with a 100 person 5k maybe 200 people no not Fitz Kohler she starts with about 15,000 all in at the OC marathon half marathon and that whole weekend and you you did a great job it was fun well it was uh it was fun that's it that's a great description but I, I certainly wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for you and then the other favorite part I have of working with you is when when you dance, Rudy. I love it when you dance. <laughs> oh, this is really going to heck. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah. Left foot, left foot, right foot, right foot. Yeah, I'm rocking it. <laughs> he rocks out so hard, and it's poor That's Rudy because right. we're, we're out in front of bazillions of people, and I go, all right, folks. This is a part of the show when Rudy starts to dance and all eyes go on that poor man. Oh, and all the people at the senior center go, oh, there he goes. Ooh la la, shake oh, that thing. Yeah. There goes our boy. Oh, so, so on the flip side, I'm going to turn it. What's your least favorite thing about working with me? Oh, my least favorite thing? Well, I can't think of a least yes, favorite thing. I, well, you... you you won't take direction when I tell you things, important things like take a break. Oh my gosh. You tell Fitz Kohler, we're, we're in a, we're in a roughly eight hour, you know, marathon announcing fest. And, and I mean that in every, every use of the word marathon, of course it is a marathon and it's a long, long time. You know, we can be out there seven, eight hours. So I say, Hey, take a 15 minute break, you know, go to, <laughs> go to get some coffee or no, no. <laughs> What? Fitz, take a break. Why not take a break? I don't want to miss anybody. <laughs> she's she's completely serious. The, the the thought of Fitz missing actually anybody, but particularly somebody she's got extra love for, or somebody she's waiting for, is so petrifying. She just won't have it. So, uh, so that's actually so then, of course, that was actually going to be my least favorite thing about you is when you tell me to take a break. <laughs> See? So it's perfect. So we're right on target. Yeah. You know, it's like I, I take breaks. You know, you need a break. <laughs> you know, there's there's things like bathroom breaks and, and little things like that or get a cup of coffee. I know. But, but you uh, know what's so nice? And I think we've, came to, we've come to a beautiful little agreement at Carlsbad Marathon where you took a break and you just brought me back some niceties. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice break. But yeah, I remember last year at Encinitas when I was sick, um, I had food poisoning the night before and I didn't want to tell you how bad I felt because I didn't want you to yell at me to take a break. I figured I'm just not going to tell him <laughs> so he doesn't scold me all day. Well, yeah, you rallied really. I mean, I knew how bad you were feeling that day and uh, and I've only had one event and it was the Carlsbad Marathon, San Diego Marathon at the time where I had just a gnarly fever. I was probably running 103 fever, you know, something like that. It was just a really rough weekend. And, and you know, and as they say in show business, the show must go on. So 
I just wasn't in a position to find somebody to replace me. And, uh, and you put one foot in front of the other, but you, you rallied, you did great. You were, uh, no, nobody would have known that you were essentially on death's door. Well, the and, night before <laughs> I was, I was, you know, recovered it certainly enough to do my job that day, but, but I definitely didn't want to tell you when I was having moments cause I thought, Oh, he's just going to tell me to go sit down and then I'm going to lose my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, that's what's happened when you try to take Fitz Kohler to a nice dinner which was uh, a very nice perk given to us from the uh, the race directors. They said, uh, "Hey, just go out on a go out on the town and and have a really nice dinner on us." Okay, not going back there. No, it didn't work out so well, huh? <laughs> not so good. Not I so will, good. We'll never have chicken parmesan before race day ever again. <laughs> the, Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've had a bunch, well, you slash we have had a ton of fun of events already this year. What's it, early February? It's yeah, crazy. already. Unbelievable. Yeah, so Walt Disney World Marathon is one of your biggest events of the year, and that was tons of fun. What was your What was your favorite part about that weekend? <sighs> favorite part? Well, you know, Fitz, it's always, and I think it's very much the same for you, and, and particularly at Disney where there's so many people that I've met, it's just seeing everybody again, you know, it's, it's, uh, people come from 50 states and Brazil and all over the place to converge on marathon weekend. And it's, it really is special. I mean, it was a, a special celebration because it was an anniversary, but, um, it's just, it's a great opportunity to see friends that you haven't seen in a while. Some people just do one Disney a year and some people are doing, you know, less Disney and, but they they show up for marathon weekend and um, it was it was just a really really fun time as you know as I, yeah I definitely had a blast you know you've heard my comparison to the people who do the dopey challenge the five k ten k half full they walk the parks all day and drink all day or night I have compared them to robot people because it doesn't make sense that a human would be able to keep up with all that what is your assessment of the people who can swing all of that. Uh, I honestly am absolutely amazed. I am impressed. I am blown away. As someone who has never, never done back-to-back -back ra – I've raced a lot, but I have never done back-to-back -back races on two days, nevertheless, dopey four days. It's amazing. It's incredible. It's no joke. I don't care how you do it. I don't, you know, some people, oh, I'm just going to take it easy and take a lot of pictures and everything. I don't care how you do it. It's still a lot of miles. It's four days of running back to back, or if they're doing goofy, it's the half and the full. It's, it's incredible. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's just absolutely, uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what else to say. I'm not doing it. Let me put it that way. Right. Even when I'm done announcing, it's not happening for me. No, because you don't. You don't even go to the parks. You're too tired to go to the parks. Oh yeah, and all the people that, and then and then some of the people that work the expo. Some of our vendor friends who. Oh my god, that's so hard to stand all day and then go run. They do. They do it on expo legs, and some of them, like our friends from Running Skirts, Cindy, they're just so fast. That's not yes. fair. No, <laughs> no, but speaking of fast, I'm going to transition into one of your personal race highs because a couple of weeks ago, you strapped uh -oh. on a bib and did a 5K. I did. I did. It was time. I just had a, a wonderful opportunity uh, given to me and I wasn't working. So, hey, why not? Why sleep in when you don't have to get up at 5 a.m. or whatever it is? And, um, and a good time right on the coast here and beautiful Southern California, little 5k it was the surf, uh, well, excuse me. It was the, the, uh, Cardiff kook 5k lots and lots of fun. First race for me of any distance in six years. And, and so what holds you besides the busy race schedule? And you and I have talked this before where I go, come on, Rudy, just go do it. What, um, I don't know what keeps you from participating in races more often. Fear. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. <laughs> so it honest. Is. Right, exactly. What are you afraid of? <laughs> um, reality? Next question? Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, I have a, I, 
have a reasonably significant race pass. Significant meaning just that I've run a lot of races. Not and you were faster than hell. You did a sub no, three no, no, marathon no big, at Big Sur. Faster no, than hell. <laughs> I'm no big deal, but you know, you just need to seriously. You need to face the father time, mother time, person time has uh, has taken a hold, and you don't got what you used to have. So even this 5K was my personal worst. Oh God, and, really? Yeah, it was my personal worst, but I'm okay with it. Okay. Don't misunderstand. I'm okay with it. Um, it's my <laughs> it's my fastest time in my 60s. Son having of a just bitch. turned Go on. 64. Go on. Go on. Go oh, okay. Go on. <laughs> um, <laughs> fastest time in my 60s. I, it's just, you know, I, I it's just getting slower. Just gets getting slower and um having to face the reality of that. And, um, but again, I, I had a wonderful time doing it. It's a beautiful course. Uh, and, and I really, what I was hoping to do is I was hoping to run 24 minutes ish. I was hoping to be in the eight minute per mile range. And, um, <laughs> as I, <Go> on. <laughs> as I, as I, and as I told a lot of friends, I just wanted to finish top 10 in my age group with hopefully 11 or more people in my age group. Mm -hmm. And and all those things were fortunately accomplished. And, no. and I, I really enjoyed myself. But you need to go on. Go on. <sighs> Come on. Jeez. Uh, I ran 22.33, mm -hmm. which was much faster than I expected. It was very hard. It hurt. And which I think if you're going to, you know, really put it all out there and that's the only way I race personally, I don't stop for pictures. I don't stop for character, <laughs> I don't stop for character stops. And, um, and I was, uh, I was second in my age group and, uh, the, the first was way ahead of me, a very, very talented runner who's also from Carlsbad. And it was, it was a really wonderful experience and it was very, um, very affirming. It was really made me excited for um, for my my current fitness level because I'm only running oh I don't know 25 30 miles a week with no speed work. I'm really not race prepared at all. So kind of got me excited. Yeah, you should be exciting excited. And I'm going to do a brief comparison here. I think there's 20 years between us and 10 minutes between us. You jerk! You're 10 minutes faster <laughs> than me, or something like that. <laughs> You're an amazing athlete. I think you, in my book, and you said fear, but I think sometimes, and this is what I'm getting, is that you hold your professional status, your, you know, Rudy the race announcer, and I think you think other people have high expectations of you out on the course as a runner. And I think people were just so freaking excited to know you were there. Half the people had no, didn't even get to interact with you or see you. But in the aftermath, when they knew they were on the same course with Rudy Novotny running, they were uh, they were swooning all over the place. Well, you're very kind, Fitz. I mean, when I said I was going to do it, when I posted on Facebook in the morning that, you know, hey, look what I'm going to do. I got lots and lots of love and encouragement and people were extremely supportive, which was super, super nice. And yes, you are correct that um, I, I hold myself to a uh, an unreasonable standard. Let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of people out there who, you know, have an idea of my previous performance. And, and so I let that affect me. Um, but it, again, people were great. They were super supportive. Uh, when I finished and, you know, my times were out, they, they were, you know, everybody was super, super nice. And it was fun being at the race and getting these double takes. Hey, where's your <laughs> microphone? Oh, where? Wait a minute. You, and then I got, and then, you know, some people just don't know the other side of, you know, of me or you or other announcers that actually are runners, you know, they, oh, you run too? Uh, yeah. You know, so <laughs> yeah. anyway, I, it was, uh, again, it was, it was really fun. And I hope to, uh, I hope to squeeze in a little more racing this year. I hope you do. I was so excited when you told me you were going to do that. That was very exciting. I was so proud of you, too. I was just so, I was tortured that I wasn't there working the event. You were very kind. And it was nice to have, 
a, uh, a good friend that was on the microphone, my buddy Jim O'Hara, gave me a big hoorah when I crossed the finish line. And it was, uh, it was actually very nice to be on the other side of things. Yeah, you know, I mean, I have the luxury of having, um, I, I legitimately feel zero pressure when out on, I'm running a race and I don't necessarily care what other people think of my time. And once I stopped fighting, I kind of lost all of that athletic competitiveness and I just simply go out for fun and, you know, um, so I do feel for you that you do have that, um, that burden because I don't carry it with me. I, mm -hmm. I would love for you to let it go. I'll work on that. That's all I can say. Mm, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. So next up on our list, after we left Walt Disney World, which was incredible, and my home base for stinky, sweaty hugs, is Carlsbad Marathon, which was the next week. That's right. We just, uh, just kind of went from one event over to the other, back to my hometown, and uh, really, you know, pretty much where it all started for me personally uh, as far as announcing, uh, was uh, my friends with In Motion, Carlsbad Marathon, and boy, we had a beautiful weekend there as well. Oh, it really was fantastic, wasn't it? Beautiful weather, it was... nice people. Now, what was your favorite part of that race weekend? Uh, I think being, well, you know, always being in your hometown, so many people you know, and, uh, and of course, a new course for the marathon was very exciting. They went to a, a two-loop coastal course, so it was interesting to see, you know, what would develop from that. So, of course, we had a new course record for the marathon uh, being a new course, and, um, and having Fitz Kohler there for the first time. That was really fun. It was a great event. They, they, they do it. They do a, an absolutely fantastic job. We had the uh, Lego Kids Magic Mile and, of course, the marathon and half marathon. F first year back for the 5K. It, it's really a, a wonderful event. And, uh, you know, among I, I guess I would have to say among my favorites, you know, particularly being uh, able to roll out of my own bed and uh, – get in my car, go a grand total of about two miles. It's incredible. And, I, <laughs> and I'm, at the, uh, I'm at the start line. It was, uh, it was a super fun weekend for sure. All right, so I got three highlights of the weekend for me. Number one was my new baby friend, Julia, at the Legoland. Oh, <laughs> Julia. <laughs> that was incredible. That was adorable. So we're we're up high on this our little tall princess tower, announcing or waiting for the kids to arrive. So none of the kids are there yet, and it's just basically a place where people are parking behind our stage. And there's this little teeny tiny, eighteen month old with pigtails. She's supposed to be walking over to the place where you get your shirts with her parents, and she saw us. And I waved and I said hi, baby, or something ridiculous like that. And she turned, and what did she do? She, it's still, it's still such a vivid memory. She turned away from mom and dad and bolted towards you like Rudy to an ice cream cone. Oh. <laughs> Very good description. Yeah, exactly. Oh. oh, it was like, it was like you were Tinkerbell or something. And, and she just, and gave you the biggest hug. Oh, oh, it was adorable. It was adorable. perfection. I went running down the stairs of our stage, and we had this magical little hug. Oh, this kid, hopefully she's not so comfortable with all strangers. But I, from what I hear is all day she told her mommy and daddy that she loved my jacket and my hair. <laughs> so that was pretty special stuff. I felt great about my jacket and hair, obviously. And then she came back out yesterday before her dad ran the half marathon to give me hugs at the uh, finish line of the 5K or some, oh, so sweet. Yeah, it was a total Julia Fitz love fest. I know, and that's the kind of fans I want. I want cute, cuddly ones. And then we had Team Hoyt. Oh, Team Hoyt. They, we had a huge, huge uh, contingent from Team Hoyt. So tell the people about Team Hoyt if they don't know. Well, Team Hoyt is, uh, is a... A group of folks with um, the the children are 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 um, intellectually um, challenged, and, and some of them have physically and physically yeah. challenged. Yeah, correct. 
and um, and the moms and dads um, essentially you know push them in um, in really cool uh, not your typical um, running joggers if you will I mean these some of these children I think I think uh, James Pathman's son Riley has got to be a hundred and uh, you know he's a, still a young man but a hundred and 20 pounds, yeah, you know, many, ish. Many of them are full size grown adults in their racing chairs. Right, right. I, I mean, I think, I think, uh, some of the earliest, um, uh, some of the earliest parts of Team Hoyt were, were, uh, Dick Hoyt and, and his son that actually did full Ironmans. They actually did Kona. Yeah. Which, which is something incredible. But, uh, Team Hoyt, just a great group. I don't know, Fitz. What was there? Was there was there fifteen ish? Twenty two. Oh, geez, thanks for the correction on that. Oh, what a and just the most loving, uh, just celebratory people. Just happy to be out there, being part of everything going on, and 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 they go all over the country. What a what a group. What what a just what a wonderful spirit. And and the kids love it, and the camaraderie between the parents and the children it's it's it really is something special yeah i love that for these people who have had their ability to move stolen in so many ways get to go out and be athletes you know they get to wear the race bib and go the distance and it's it's my favorite i mean you we've talked about this before i completely admire the elites the fastest people but it's it's these gritty people that are overcoming Big things, little things. Oh my gosh! It's such so a, true. It's a yeah. privilege to be there with them, isn't it? It really is. It it really, really is. You know, anybody, uh, and of course we we celebrate anybody overcoming any kind of challenges. But there, I, it's been a long time since we've used the word disabled because we don't see disabled people. We see some people that have a number of different challenges, but they. They come and they overcome and they they shine and it, it truly is an honor to be present and to be able to send them off and, of course, to bring them home. Yeah, that's very exciting pieces of our puzzle. And then following up with our dear friend, Dr. Brian Solberg. Brian Solberg doing Marathon 100 on foot. Incredible. Absolutely. And, uh, You've gotten to know uh, Dr. Brian very, very well over the last couple of years. I think I think we are kind of sweethearts a little bit, Rudy. <laughs> I think you. I think you have a lot of sweethearts. <laughs> <laughs> I fell in love pretty quickly, it seems. Uh, yeah, he's uh, incomplete quadriplegic. Was told he'd never walk again. Did many marathons in chairs, the push rim, and the hand cycle, but he he got himself up on foot, and all year he's been doing sometimes two marathons a week, maybe more. He, not all of them are official races, but he's gone that distance. You know, he's already beaten that, but that was a very special day where he brought out his harem of Wonder oh. Women. Oh, I mean, come on. <laughs> that guy rules. I just, I want to party with Brian more often because he has got that bevy of babes, all of which are wonderful, adorable, gorgeous, and fast on top of it all. Ridiculous. Huh. Absolutely absurd. And that's that's huh. really the, the common thread amongst Brian runs with guides, and the guides help him do things like open up his nutrition, grab his water he has. Besides the, uh, the walking braces, he's got tremors in his hands, so he just could use some on-course support. But... They're never some dude with a mustache and bad hair. They're always gorgeous, <laughs> right? <laughs> There's dudes with mustaches and bad hair in that group. No, there's not. I don't think, you know, with all due respect to those people, I, I don't think they're allowed in uh, no. Dr. B's uh, bevy of beauties. <laughs> he is prejudiced, prejudiced against running with anyone underneath the level 10 on the rating scale. <laughs> exactly. I think there's a couple nines there. And then. <laughs> Barely. And they're all decked out on this day in um, uh, blue skirts with white stars and the red Wonder Woman tank tops. It's just, it's obscene and spectacular at the same time, right? Yeah, and, and we Brian is truly a, a very, very special person in, uh, in many ways, a, uh, a uh, 
Boy Scout troop leader for oh I I don't know Eagle how long. Scout leader Rudy you got to get well, that he is, right. Okay okay well I didn't know that they were all Eagle Scouts. Right. I know he's got lots of Eagle Scouts out there. I don't know if he is one himself. I wouldn't be surprised if he was. But he just dedicates so much time to others. Uh, he is a longtime volunteer for Challenge Athletes Foundation. And just gives, 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 gives. Just one of those special people that uh, it's just a pleasure to be there and celebrate something as big as his uh, 100th marathon. It was it was just wonderful. Really cool. And so, of course, he shows up at all of our races with this sign. It's, um, what does he say about you? It's, what's, what's the... <laughs> it's I Rocks. think I just get Rudy, 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 Rudy. Okay, then, Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. And I'm Fab right. Fitz. Right, right. Yeah, and he... Uh, he rolls out the sign and lets us know how much he loves us as well. So He's so uh, sweet. But we told <laughs> I told him I said Brian, no sign tomorrow. Do not bring the sign. This is all about you. But he did. He had one of his Wonder Woman carry it. And how pathetic was the sign I made that morning? <laughs> well, it was last minute. You know, we do our best, and, and uh, you did a fine job. <laughs> oh, thank you. I said, Rudy, I need some poster board because I'm, you know, 3,000 miles away from home. And Rudy goes, I have some poster board at home. And I thought, what are you doing arts and crafts, man? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, a very old project that never got off the ground. Oh. I'm happy to have that poster board when you needed it. <laughs> I did my best, but compared to Brian's, my signage wasn't so fancy. <laughs> so so we talked about your race high being that second place age group award, you silver medalist. But yesterday you had a race low. <laughs> it wasn't even a race low. It was a running low. Uh, yeah, I guess low would be the operative term. <laughs> uh, really low. Yeah, low. How low can you go? Oh, I'll tell you how low I can go. Um, well, it seems fits that just about once a year, I take a fall. And um, yesterday, I, I think I was past due. I think somehow the universe knew I was probably at about 14 months or 15 months since my last fall. So I was out on the coast doing a very modest run. And um I did something that is just not a good idea. I, I decided to do a slight extension of my run when I should have just wrapped it up and turned into uh, to a little trail area on the cliffs in Carlsbad. Nice little kind of dirt path that's not very long. And uh, about uh, five steps into that, I dragged my feet, hit a rock, and went down uh Face first, uh, not on my face, fortunately, but uh, just fell, fell forward and splat on my knee, rolling over onto my shoulder, sore thumb. And, of course, this happens right in front of a very pretty girl watching the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, couldn't do it alone. No, no. It's almost like the tree falling in the woods. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so I have a, um, a bruised knee, and I'll be just fine. You know, it's more it's more ego than anything else. You know, oh, I meant to do that one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> How did I look? <laughs> and did you spring right up, or did you give yourself a minute to stay down? Actually, actually, that was um, that was a fairly significant one. I just kind of laid there for a moment. <laughs> she she came over to make sure I was okay, and you know. Yeah, I'm just fine. Oh. Get, yeah, about 30, 45 seconds on the ground and got back up and kept on running because that's generally what we do. Oh, I'm so sad for yeah. you. I'm sorry that happened. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're really sad. I can tell we <laughs> had to include it in this podcast. No, no, no. Well, it's real, right? It's part it, of the it deal. It is real. And, and right now, all the trail runners that are out there, and I know there's a lot that listen to your podcast, are going, big deal, he fell. <sighs> hey, dude, do you know how many times I fall along the trail? And I know a lot of them do, you know? Some of this single track trail and some of this really gnarly stuff, some of these trail runners uh, uh, run on is just, you know, packed with opportunities to fall on your face. Well, that's... Generally is not my uh, 
that's not the turf I run on. So for me, this was uh, yesterday was the opportunity, and I'll be just fine. Thank yes. you very well, much, Fitz Kohler. Well, you will, <laughs> but there's nothing like hitting concrete or hard yeah. stuff, especially yeah. as a grown up. I don't know how I did it so frequently at a child and kind of kept a good disposition because if I felt like that on a regular basis, I'd give up. I'd never get out of bed. <laughs> I think as kids, we're more, um, I think we have more Short. role to us, you know? I think there's yeah. just more of a bounce factor. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I <laughs> am so glad I was not there. Although I would have loved to be helpful for you, but yeah. to watch you go down like that, yeah. I don't know how much help I would be. I would freak out a little bit. <laughs> I was fumbling around for the, the little button that I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> Falling and I can't get up. Help! I'm falling and I can't get up. <laughs> oh, that's so oh. So that reminds me, because you were talking about being goofy. Is remember we went out for pizza post race a couple years ago. So I'm gonna. Yes. Okay, and well, not that we haven't done that a couple times, but I forget what race <laughs> it was. But we went to a pizza place, and um, we were in your Prius. And we went in, and I don't know what we ate, but, like, <laughs> pizza, lasagna, but nonetheless, we had eaten so much that I was stuffed, and you were stuffed, and when we were done, I said, okay, I'm going to go use the restroom, and you said, meet me out in my car. Said, okay. All right. <laughs> so, anyways, I come out of the restaurant, and it's nighttime. <laughs> Come on, I don't think you're going to be able to get through this one. It's pretty bad. So I come out. All right, folks, you're going to need to fast forward. It's so bad. So I get, I go out to his car, and I open up the passenger side, and I look in. And, sorry. He's eating, he's eating noodles from the Chinese place next door, and all I can focus on is, I'm focusing on the noodles, thinking, oh my god, how are you eating again? I was appalled, and then I looked it up, and it wasn't you at all, it was some other guy, and he's just staring at me, chewing. Uh, okay, you... Wait, I got have to interrupt. You did a terrible job telling that story. Oh no! Right, Here's what happened. She comes out. I'm in my car facing the restaurant. I see, you know, I have the best view there is. She walk. I watch. She walks over to this other car. She gets in and sits down. And I'm watching this, wondering. What in the world is going on? And this guy doesn't miss a beat. He's eating these noodles. She's looking over at him. He's looking over at her like he just won the lottery. <laughs> this, this, and, then, and then about 30 seconds later, she emerges from the car. And I'm dying because I pretty much understand what's happened here. And she's laughing so hard she can barely make it over to my car. Gets in my car. I think it took us five minutes to even move because we were both laughing so hard. We weren't even talking. Oh, That was a blonde moment unlike any other I have ever witnessed. Oh, man. That was so funny, too. And the worst for this, for this poor man is when... I realized what happened. The big monkey laugh I let out into his face. There was no, oops, sorry. There was, ha, 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 right? In, I don't think I got in a word edgewise. I just left his car screaming, laughing. <laughs> I, I th To this day, he is probably still telling that story on a weekly basis to anybody who will listen. Oh, I'd love to hear his version of it. That's for sure. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was a... That was a Fitz Kohler moment that will uh, that will be part of your legacy, whether you like it or not. Oh. And, and and I appreciate your good sport to share that one because that was epic. Oh, that was so funny! I just all I can imagine is that I'm usually so tired after a big marathon. I'm just so tired. My brain is done. Don't you feel like you're mentally done? Yeah, but not that done. Not I get that in the done. Right. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, there you go. <laughs> 
<laughs> we got different levels of done, apparently, but... Exactly. Oh, my God. I just remember looking at you, what I thought was you, and being so appalled that you were eating. And that was all I could focus on was, what? He's eating? I just hadn't finished. I was still hungry. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So, moving on from that nonsense, um, at what, coming up, we got good stuff coming up. We got a ton of good stuff coming up. Can't wait to see all all our peeps and friends at uh, a very, very, very busy uh, spring that we have. Yeah, we got Encinitas is next, right? Is that next? That is correct. Well, I'll see a whole bunch of people at Princess, and I think you're going to uh, put yourself down at the uh, the hug station, right? I will. I will be hosting the hugging station again. This is a very yeah. important part of the race, you know. That is a, it's a huge part. I, I looked at, I looked at Disney's, um, I looked at the program and they still haven't put it onto the program. I don't even but, understand that. <laughs> I don't either. I don't need, it hasn't made it the program, but I know that everybody has it on their calendar and they understand that's one of the most important features of Princess Weekend coming up. Yes. And it's at the, the white VIP tent before the finish line. So even before you get to Mr. Mouth over here, the noisy one, <laughs> you have to stop by me for the hug. Right? It's there cool. you go. There you go. To, to heck with your PR. You know what I really love last uh, at Walt Disney World Marathon is when you left your stage and then you went down uh, about 100 yards before the finish line. I think people really enjoyed that. So, yeah. You know, every once in a while, it's just great. As you know, you, you've done it yourself before and you know the feeling. It's just good to get yourself out there on the race course and just, you know, catch people before before they're there. And, and they're always so surprised because it's not something we do a ton of. But um, and, and I actually walked. You said 100 yards. I oh my, I ended up just keep – I kept walking. I, I ended up about a quarter mile uh, into, the, uh, in, into the crowd. And, uh, and people really enjoyed it. I got a lot of hugs too. Not as many as you did, but I got a lot of hugs. Uh, we took a, a lot of selfies and, and just really enjoyed it. And as you said, so many people are, I don't care about my time. I'm just, I just, I just need to know that if I'm seeing you here, it can't be too far from the actual finish line. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Actually, one of the things I was talking with someone about the other night is, um, you know, I, I'm not happy with the courses that take me near the finish line. You know, even if I know I'm at mile eight, when I hear the announcer, in my mind, I'm done. Right. You know, right, so I, right. I don't like getting close. And, you know, when we do get close to your voice in particular at these races, it feels pretty exciting. And then to have you out there, you should come. Whatever race I run, you should come out to visit me and give me a hug. Okay, that's a deal. You're on. That would yeah, be any race that, uh, any race that, either goes by the finish line before you're actually finished and there are a number of them any course that does that or or as you as you said and I haven't really experienced this more than a couple times and it's been a long time since then uh, that you can hear you can hear the finish line and yet you still have to run you know two three four miles five miles even if you have to run another 600 yards it's uh it's too far so that that always makes it uh an extra challenge when you're uh, when you're there, but you're not there. And then uh, going back to that at Walt Disney World, I think it was when I did the 5K and I was in Corrale, so I started pretty quickly. And as as I go, I could hear you yelling "go" because you said "go" like 74 million times there, right? <laughs> yeah, like it's about just a few less than that, <laughs> slightly. But it's kind of funny where I'm a mile <laughs> away and I can hear you yelling "go," and it, and then um, I come out through the I come. I come through the finish line, I get my medal, I go get my drink. You're still yelling, go! <laughs> I go get on the bus. And I can't move. They won't let these buses out because Rudy Novotny is still over there yelling, go! So, <laughs> Yeah, well, in that case, indeed, in that case, the, uh, the route for the bus back to, uh, back to where you needed to go and back to where everybody needed to go crossed with the uh, actual course. Yeah. So, uh, and, and as you know, we had, and I don't remember what the actual number was. It was significant. Uh, I think it was, I think it was close to 30. I think it was close to 30 because we were doing mini corrals, you know, it wasn't like we were, 
we weren't we weren't into double letters or anything. We weren't a corral A A A or B B B or anything like that. But corral A corral A only had one. But when we got to C or D or E, we might have had three mini corrals or four mini corrals and stuff like that. So yeah, we I, I believe it was I believe it was something like forty five minutes for the uh, for the last corral at to least. Start. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 45, 50 minutes. So, yeah, but we got, like you said, we got Encinitas coming up. Encinitas half, that's so much fun. Yeah, and this is second annual. If, folks, you're in the area or you want to go on a racecation, that is a crazy fun race. The pre-race event is a party. The post-race event is a party. We love it. That's a good one, isn't it? Yeah, seven and a half miles of, of coastal running where you're actually in sight or in sound of the ocean in beautiful North San Diego County. Uh, a great uh, a great breakfast after and a really really fun party with lots of bling. Uh, it's it's really exceptional. As Fitz said, it's uh, it's only the the second presentation, but boy, if, if it's anywhere near as good as year one, where you usually have you know a little of this or a little of that go wrong. Nothing uh, went which, wrong last year, which never happened exactly. Yeah. Uh, it, it's uh, our friends. Uh, Bob and Meg Nichols just do a wonderful job. Great volunteers, fantastic community support, and uh, just a super fun. The whole weekend, the whole energy of North Coastal San Diego is spectacular. It's a, it's a great run. I'd, I'd love to see more people out there. Absolutely. And then two weeks later, we have Skechers Performance Los Angeles Marathon. Oh, that's huge. So that's... That is a uh, that's an, an iconic run. I mean, when you start at Dodger Stadium and end up at the Santa Monica Pier and everything in between, the route is uh, is just amazing. Uh, our friends from Conquer Group, Conquer Endurance Group, I should say, do a phenomenal job. Uh, there's so much attention to detail. And uh, just an amazing 26.2 mile route. Now, of course, there's the big five 5K as well the day before. Tons you know, of anybody, fun. Right. Anybody with, uh, you know, family members or anybody looking to do something a little shorter, that is uh, over at Dodger Stadium. You kind of go out and about, start and finish in Dodger Stadium. Just absolutely spectacular. And then we have the kids' races. Kids... <laughs> Fitz Kohler, never, never going to forget those kids' races. That, that's her specialty. The kids' races is a lot of fun. Yes, and my only burden there is not being the creepy announcer who squishes and squeezes and kisses all the kids. <laughs> I try so hard. You, you do. You do. You do a pretty good job at holding that back. I do. I do. On occasion, if they run into my arms or if they hit the ground and they don't get up, I have a good excuse to <laughs> That's true. Lift that's them. true. Oh, my gosh. Um, but I'm excited about that one, and I'm really, there's two things I'm focused on right now is, you know, at uh, LA, we have so many world-class athletes from around the world, so we need to get the phonetic spellings of some of these names, because I was in an Uber with an, a guy from Kenya coming back from Texas the other day, and uh, rem- our female win- winner, her name was something like Hepgerbot or something like that. I asked him, he knew who she was, and he said her name is pronounced Majuju or something completely different than the the way it looks. That's true. Well when we get you know, we start getting the Kenyans, the Ethiopians and some of the uh and the Moroccans, some of those names do get uh do get a little tricky and I, I agree. I saw your email to the <laughs> to the race staff going, Can we have phonetics on all those please? Oh my a, gosh. A, it's actually a very good idea. Very good idea. Because as as you and I know very well, and as I complain vocally from time to time, no one, it seems, is named Smith or Johnson Not or one. Jones anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> Where, and if you guy? are, if if you're out there yelling at, at your uh Yelling at your your podcast device, your MP3 player, whatever, because that's your name. Please come to our races because we'd love to see you at the finish line and give you a shout out. At least. Oh, oh, oh. Remember the girl at Carlsbad Marathon who gave us some fake name? Her name was like Coco Buns or something. Oh, we still- <laughs> and, and then she has, you know, on our announcer screen, we get first name, last name, city, state, maybe country, age. 
And so on occasion, Rudy and I screw with each other and I see this wacky name come up. Her name was, again, it was Coco Nuts or something. But I see a, a big word for her city and I go, Rudy, where is she from? And he leans in. Do you remember where she put she was from? No, where, where was she from on the, that one? The state was Hawaii and she put her city in as Wana Lekahaini. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Rudy, yes. Thank you very from? much. Talk about taking advantage of the announcers. Oh, so sweet. And, and, and actually, there, and, and the rest of that day, there were a couple that we can't share on this, uh, Correct. <laughs> on this podcast. Thank you very much, folks. That's yeah. right. Yeah, we do. Um, we do our best, but sometimes we get a good laugh out of the names. And um, at Los Angeles, I'm actually. I want your bet. Do you think the flamingo will beat the T Rex this year? Last year, we had a big grand finale with the T Rex and the flamingo. That's true. I think they were. Uh, I think they were shoulder to shoulder coming into the finish line. It yeah. was. Uh, it, it was quite a battle. Um, but the, uh, but for sure the T-Rex is, is you, uh, pointed out to me, the T-Rex, no matter what happened, the T-Rex won their age group. Yeah. The, uh, Jurassic Park division, the correct 100... the five, five billion and over. That's right. So there's, there's some success for everybody, but yeah, you know, I think the T-Rex came by and was kind of celebrating, greeting the fans and then the flamingo just cruised on by them and it was big time. So my money's on the flamingo this year if they come back. Sounds good. I'll look forward to uh, seeing them duel it out at the finish line. All right, mister. Thank you so much for finally agreeing to be a guest on my show again. Pleasure. It's always fun. Love talking uh, running, racing, and everything in between. And, of course, we've got loads and loads of stuff coming up behind all those dates with Big Sur and OC Marathon. And you've got You've got lots and lots of stuff you're doing, Buffalo and, and other stuff, isn't that right? Yeah, I have Buffalo Marathon, Ann Arbor Marathon, Ann Arbor 5K. I really like the people in Michigan, apparently. Apparently, they like <laughs> me back. And apparently, they like you. So, well, thank you for inviting me on. It's always uh, always fun to do the podcast, but get your butt back here, Kohler. we got work to do. You got it. Well, I adore you, and thank you for being my favorite person with noise and stuff. Thanks, Vince. I'm going to run today, and, um, no. and I'm going to be no. extra careful. No running today. <laughs> Go and do something else. Strength train. Got it? Got it. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening, Rudy. You tell them what to do. Tell them what to get to. Get to work. That's right. Get to work, everybody. Bye. Hi, this is Rudy Novotny, the voice of America's Marathons. We all love how much running has benefited every aspect of our lives, so much so that most of us only wish we'd started sooner. Wouldn't it be wonderful to give the opportunity to children of today? Well, you can. The Morning Mile is a before-school walking and running program that gives children a chance to start each day in an active way while enjoying fun, music, and friends. That's every child, every day. It's also supported by a wonderful system of rewards, which keeps students highly motivated and frequently congratulated. Created by our favorite fitness expert, Fitz Kohler, morning milers across the country have run over 2 million miles and are having greater success with academics, behavior, and sports because of it. The morning mile is free to the child, free to the school, and is inexpensively funded by businesses or generous individuals. Help more kids get moving in the morning by visiting morningmile.com. Champion the program at your favorite school or find out more about sponsorship opportunities. That's morningmile.com. Long may you run.